Gertrude Stein, Unveiling the Enigma Behind the Avant-Garde Legend Gertrude Stein, an iconic figure of the 20th century, is renowned for her contributions to literature and art. While celebrated for her avant-garde writing and role as a patron of the arts, Stein's life was equally marked by controversy and intrigue. This video delves into 10 astonishing and scandalous facts about Gertrude Stein, each shedding light on the complexities of her character and the paradoxes of her life. Fact number 1. Early Life and Education Gertrude Stein was born into an upper-middle-class Jewish family in Allegheny, Pennsylvania, now part of Pittsburgh, on February 3, 1874. Her father was a successful businessman with real estate holdings, and the family was well off. The Stein family moved to Vienna and then Paris when Gertrude was three, seeking to immerse their children in European culture. They returned to the U.S. in 1878, settling in Oakland, California. Stein's early education was marked by the cultural richness of her European experiences and the intellectual stimulation she found in reading Shakespeare, Wordsworth, Scott, and other classic authors. After the death of her parents, her mother when she was 14 and her father three years later, Gertrude and her siblings were taken care of by their eldest brother, Michael. Stein's formal education continued at Radcliffe College, where she studied under the renowned psychologist William James. She later attended Johns Hopkins Medical School, but did not complete her degree, finding the environment challenging and the curriculum uninteresting to her. Number 2. Controversial Political Affiliations with the Vichy Government Gertrude Stein's association with the Vichy government during World War II is a source of significant controversy. The Vichy regime, led by Marshal Philippe Pétain, was an authoritarian government that collaborated with Nazi Germany following France's defeat in 1940. This government was responsible for implementing and enforcing Nazi policies, including anti-Semitic laws and the deportation of Jews to concentration camps. The Vichy regime's alignment with the Nazis and its role in facilitating the Holocaust makes Stein's support for Pétain and her self-described role as a propagandist for the regime deeply problematic. This alignment with a regime that collaborated with the Nazis and was responsible for the persecution of Jews, including the deportation of nearly 80,000 French Jews, raises significant questions about her ethical and political stance during this tumultuous period. Number 3. LGBTQ plus cultural icon Gertrude Stein's relationship with Alice B. Toklas and her open lesbian identity made her an influential figure in LGBTQ plus culture. Stein met Toklas in 1907, and the two quickly formed a deep bond. Toklas became Stein's life partner, muse, and literary executor. Their relationship was significant not only for its personal importance to Stein but also as a visible and unapologetic partnership between two women at a time when homosexuality was largely stigmatized and hidden. Stein's openness about her relationship with Toklas, reflected in her work and lifestyle, made her a pioneering figure in the LGBTQ community. Her ability to live authentically, despite societal norms and expectations, has made her an enduring symbol of resilience and self-acceptance within the community. Her work and life continue to inspire and resonate with many in the LGBTQ community, celebrating the importance of living one's truth. Number 4. Support for Marichal Paytan Stein's admiration for Marshal Paytan, despite her Jewish heritage and the ongoing Nazi occupation of France, presents a complex and paradoxical picture. Paytan, known for collaborating with the Nazis, was a figure Stein saw as capable of restoring stability and traditional values to France. Her enthusiasm for Paytan can be traced back to her friendship with Bernard Fay, a professor of American studies in France and a supporter of Paytan's political thought. Stein's admiration for Fay's ideas grew in tandem with her appreciation for Paytan's vision of political stability, which she believed was necessary for artists to work in undisturbed serenity. Her support for Paytan continued even after the war, stating that his 1940 armistice with Hitler had achieved a miracle, despite Paytan being sentenced to death by a French court for treason. This aspect of Stein's life highlights the complicated intersection of art, politics, and personal beliefs during one of the darkest chapters of modern history. Number 5. Stein and Bernard Fay. Gertrude Stein's friendship with Bernard Fay was significant both personally and politically. 
Fay was a French writer and historian of American culture, known for his royalist and far-right political views. He held a prestigious position as the youngest person ever given a chair at the Collège de France. Stein and Fay met in 1926, and their friendship deepened over shared right-wing ideas and convictions. Fay played a crucial role in Stein's literary success in America, particularly by orchestrating her highly successful tour of America in 1934-35 following her bestseller, The Autobiography of Alice B. Toklas. This friendship extended beyond mutual career support, their conversations and correspondence reveal a convergence of right-wing beliefs, criticizing modernity and democratic governments in France and the US, and idealizing the pre-revolutionary 18th century. This alignment had significant implications for Stein's political stance and actions during World War II. Number 6. Alleged Nazi Collaboration Stein's survival in Nazi-occupied France has been a subject of debate, with speculation that her safety was ensured through her connections with influential Vichy government officials, notably Bernard Fay. Fay's role within the Vichy regime included the repression of Freemasons, and he was later tried for his collaboration with the Nazis. It is believed that Fay used his position and influence to protect Stein and her partner, Alice B. Toklas, during the war. He reportedly secured for them privileges like bread tickets and driving licenses, and may have intervened to prevent the confiscation of Stein's art collection by the Nazis. Stein's decision to remain in France during the war, despite the obvious risks, and her reliance on Fay for protection, raise questions about her complicity and moral stance during a period marked by widespread persecution and atrocity. Number 7. The Hitler Scandal One of the most controversial aspects of Gertrude Stein's life is her comment in a 1934 interview where she suggested that Adolf Hitler should have received the Nobel Peace Prize. Stein's remark was made in the context of discussing Hitler's actions in Germany, specifically his efforts to remove contest and struggle by driving out Jews in democratic elements. While some have interpreted this statement as an example of Jewish humor or irony, others view it as a deeply disturbing and morally ambiguous stance. This comment has significantly contributed to the controversy surrounding her political views, especially considering her Jewish heritage and the horrific outcomes of Hitler's regime. The statement's perversity and Stein's possible intentions in making it have been the subject of much debate and analysis, reflecting the complex interplay between Stein's avant-garde persona and her political beliefs during a volatile historical period. Number 8. Struggles with Traditional Roles Stein's personal life was characterized by a nonconformity to traditional societal roles. Born into a wealthy Jewish family in the late 19th century, Stein grew up during a time when expectations for women were largely confined to domestic roles. Her rejection of these conventional roles is evident in her decision not to marry or pursue a traditional family life. Instead, she forged her path as a writer and intellectual. Additionally, Stein experienced unrequited love for another woman during her early years, a reflection of her struggles with her sexual identity in an era when homosexuality was widely stigmatized. This aspect of her life was further complicated by societal norms and expectations for women. Stein's relationships and personal choices underscore her challenges in fitting into traditional societal norms and highlight her role as a pioneer not just in literature, but also in terms of living a life that was true to her identity. Number 9. Influence on Modern Art Gertrude Stein was more than a literary icon, she was a pivotal figure in the development of modern art. Along with her brother, Leo, Stein amassed a remarkable art collection in her Parisian apartment, which became a hub for the avant-garde art movement. They were early patrons of artists like Pablo Picasso and Henri Matisse, buying their works when they were still relatively unknown. These purchases not only supported the artists financially but also helped to elevate their profiles in the art world. Stein's salon at 27 Rue de Fleurus was a gathering place where these artists, along with others such as Juan Gris and Georges Braque, met and exchanged ideas. This environment fostered creative collaborations and discussions, significantly influencing the direction of modern art. Stein's role as a patron and her astute eye for groundbreaking art helped shape the careers of many prominent artists of the time. Number 10. Pioneering Experimental Literature Stein's innovative writing style, characterized by its use of repetitive phrases, lack of traditional narrative structure, and continuous present tense, 
played a significant role in shaping modernist literature. Her works, such as The Making of Americans, written from 1902 to 1911, and Tender Buttons, 1914, challenged conventional narrative forms and introduced a new approach to literature. Stein's style was influenced by her studies in psychology and her interest in stream of consciousness as a literary technique. She was particularly interested in exploring the complexity of human thought and consciousness, which was reflected in her unique and experimental approach to writing.